In the previous episode, this makes perfect sense that if you have a terrible diet, high stress, no exercise, that you will be inflamed and you will have a weaker body and you will accelerate whatever disease processes you have going on. So of course it makes sense that whatever your underlying health conditions are, we would anticipate a higher quality of life in improved function if we address all of the self-care routines that are part of the toolkit that you and I use. Welcome to Reinvent Healthcare, a podcast for health and wellness practitioners passionately committed to transforming our current broken disease-focused system. Your host, Dr. Rita Marie Los Calzo, is devoted to helping you get results with complex health challenges like autoimmune, hormonal imbalances, and chronic health challenges caused by nutritional and lifestyle-induced imbalances. Here's your host, Dr. Rita Marie. Welcome back to Reinvent Healthcare, the podcast for health and wellness practitioners who are passionate about making a difference. On today's episode, we're going to explore the amazing healing potential right in the kitchen. Most people don't understand just how much healing potential exists in the little jars sitting in their spice racks. When you can share this valuable resource right under your patient's noses, they're thrilled. Many of the clients we encounter have out-of-balance immune systems stemming from poor dietary choices, stress, and the lack of superfoods in their diets. And by superfoods, I mean the most nutrient-dense, whole, fresh, and dried foods that should be in everyone's kitchens. Things like sea greens and fresh leafy greens, powdered greens, and all the herbs and spices we'll talk about today. Hydrogenated oils, Heated fats and processed foods contribute to the mess, along with the presence of food allergens, preservatives, and pesticides in the foods that people eat regularly. Even your well-educated clientele are still eating things they may not digest well, or for which their immune system has developed antibodies. Still others have replaced the white grains for whole grains, but don't understand the impact of high-carbohydrate foods on their immune systems. In this episode of Reinvent Healthcare, we're going to explore the wonderful world of kitchen herbalism and focus on herbs and spices your clients likely already have that support immune function and protect them from infectious disease. Many centuries ago, Hippocrates, often called the father of modern medicine, said, let thy food be thy medicine, and thy medicine be thy food. Hippocrates' words ring true today and make sense in ways Hippocrates had never probably even dreamed of. Sure, our modern world is filled with conveniences and technology that creates ease and fun around lots of tasks that used to be pure drudgery, like writing of a book or manuscript. But those conveniences often come with a cost. The byproducts of our modern conveniences, pollutants we never dreamed of in Hippocrates' time, pour out into the atmosphere. The food supply is tainted with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, processed and oxidized foods, and genetically modified organisms. Resistant strains of bacteria are the sequela of the antibiotic era. Obesity is at an all-time high as a result of new forms of entertainment that keep our kids indoors, inactive, and chained to their chairs. And did I mention all the artificial colors, flavors, and preservatives that are added to the food supply that the majority of people in the modern world consume? Hippocrates had no idea how significant it would be to return to his words in the 21st century and actually put them into practice. Herbs and spices have been used for millennia for treating a variety of common ailments. Some of the medicinal uses of plants are widely recognized, even by modern medicine. Other uses are often more obscure and remain in the realm of the modern-day herbalist and alternative health enthusiast. It's fun to think of all the health benefits of a meal you've created with a variety of herbs and spices. Italian flavors like basil, oregano, garlic, and thyme are gems for your immune system. The antimicrobial effects of oregano are widely touted. 
The sweet herbs like fennel, cinnamon, and cardamom are comminatives, which means they calm digestion. Still others like lavender and chamomile are relaxing and offer benefits for mood. I have a vivid memory of an incident in which my seven-year-old son, Eric, now a grown man, brought me a bag of herbs and said, here, mommy, smell this. Surprised, I asked, what's this? His reply was, it's relaxing herbs, and you need them right now to calm down. I'd been having some trouble getting his three-year-old brother to cooperate, and I was apparently noticeably stressed. When I asked him how he knew how to combine these herbs, he replied, It was easy. I just opened all the jars in the spice rack and I smelled them. If they smelled relaxing, I put them in the bag. I carried that bag with me for many years until it deteriorated. The message of the herbs spoke to my son, and they can speak to everyone. There are a number of ways we can use the herbs and spices in the kitchen as medicine. When added to foods, herbs and spices are so much more than just flavor enhancers. They have beneficial healing powers. You can add herbs and spices to smoothies, soups, vegetable dishes, and even desserts. They can be used as teas. Dried or fresh flowers and leaves can be simply placed in a cup, a French press or a teapot, covered with boiling water and allowed to steep for anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. The general guideline is a teaspoon of herb per eight ounces of water, or one ounce of the combined total of the herbs to each pint of water. For a stronger brew, you can even use up to a tablespoon of the herb. For herbs that are not already powdered, simmering might be required to attain a strong enough brew to have medicinal effects. Stronger than a tea or infusion is something called a decoction. Decoctions are made from roots, bark, seeds, and stems, the hard parts of the plants. To decoct, simply simmer one ounce of dried herbs for each one and a half pints of water for about 30 minutes, sometimes an hour, in a covered pot, and strain and drink. Things like reishi mushroom, which come as these big old hard chunks, sometimes take a couple of days to decoct to full out their their full medicinal value. You can even teach your clients to make their own tinctures from herbs and spices in their kitchen. To prepare, soak two to four ounces of herbs and a pint of 60 to 80 proof alcohol, such as vodka. If the herbs are lighter, primarily leaves and flowers, you only need two ounces. For heavier barks and roots, four ounces is recommended. In any case, more liquid that you add is going to be absorbed by the herbs. Every day, you shake the mixture for a minute or two, and after 14 days or longer, strain off the herbs and extract the remaining by twisting through a cheesecloth. Store the resulting tincture in a sealed dark glass bottle. This is not hard to do, and it provides kind of a fun way of taking those herbs and spices in the kitchen and turning them into medicine. Decant tincture as needed into those little tincture bottles you can buy at the health food store, and they can remain potent for several years. For many herbs and spices, you can make topical poultices by starting with a tea, which is also called an infusion. You allow the mixture to cool to a comfortable temperature, then soak clean washcloths in the infusion and apply the cloth to affected area. They can even be used as eye washes. So, so many uses of these herbs that are just sitting in the kitchen waiting to be used. Some powdered herbs can even be stirred into melted coconut oil, then refrigerated to harden. And that makes a really nice soothing skin application. And it can be used for treating hemorrhoids. Cayenne pepper, yes, that cayenne pepper, has been shown to be helpful for treating peripheral neuropathies. Hot pepper cream can be made by stirring about three tablespoons of cayenne into a cup of coconut oil, and then that can be applied. You can put it in the refrigerator or let it harden at room temperature. And another way to make tinctures, although not as potent as alcohol tinctures, is infused vinegar. And that's good for kids and alcoholics and people who are abstaining from alcohol or those with alcohol sensitivities. The dried herbs tend to produce the most effective medicinal vinegar extract, but you can still use fresh herbs. And you can make nutritive vinegars that can be flavorful and have some healing properties as well. 
The best vinegar to use is actually apple cider vinegar because it's the most medicinal, but coconut vinegar and umeboshi vinegar are alkalizing and can be used as well. You just have to put a quarter cup of dried herb or three-fourths to one cup of finely minced fresh herbs into a pint of vinegar and just let it sit around at room temperature for a few days, preferably around two weeks or longer, to get the full effect. And because of the vinegar, it, it can keep indefinitely. Infused oils can be used similarly, and you want to use good oils. You don't want to go get a hydrogenated oil off the shelf that's been sitting and oxidizing for years, but best is a good cold-pressed oil, oftentimes used are sesame and extra virgin olive as well as coconut. And if you take a quarter cup of dried herb or three-fourths to one cup of the minced fresh herb, you can add that to a pint of oil and just let it sit at room temperature. Again, at least for a few days, but preferably two weeks or longer for full effect. If you refrigerate it and keep it away from the heat, air, and, and light, it can keep for a couple of years. So now that you understand how to use the kitchen herbs and spices medicinally, let's look at the ones that have been shown to have medicinal value for the immune system. I'm going to share these herbs with you in alphabetical order. So let's start with allspice. It's a common kitchen herb that's usually used as a digestive aid as it prevents and relieves gas and flatulence and can treat vomiting, stomach ache, diarrhea, and indigestion. It's also commonly used as a remedy for fever, cold, and flu, and can be used to fight yeast infections and fungal infections. As a side benefit, it also lowers blood sugar. And we know that elevated blood sugar is one of the worst things for the immune system. Basil is a potent antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, antioxidant, and overall antimicrobial. It's anti-everything except for good health. <laughs> it benefits digestion, including relieving constipation, which we know that that can affect the immune system and overall body health. It can also benefit blood sugar, right, which improves lymphocyte function. We know that when the blood sugar goes too high, the white blood cells decrease their ability to gobble up infection. Basil is also a good source of vitamin A, magnesium, potassium, iron, and calcium. And all of these have good immune system benefits. Bay leaves, you know, those little leaves that we stick into soups and stews and then take them out. We don't actually eat them. We let them infuse their goodness into the material we're making. They've been found to relieve throat inflammation and a good source of the immune-boosting minerals and vitamins like vitamin A and C. And it's also carminative, meaning it calms the digestive tract. And it's also blood sugar balancing. And we know how important digestion and blood sugar balance are to having a healthy immune system. Black pepper is a cool one. It doesn't have as much in the way of specific effects like some of these others, but it stimulates the digestive organs and increases saliva and gastric juices, which means it helps to improve what? Nutrient absorption from food. And also when it's used in blends, it improves the absorption of other herbs eaten with it. Cardamom, another one. I think people love it or hate it. I love it. It's got that sweet taste and it's often used in chai and it helps the immune system by supporting healthy digestion and blood sugar. It's also been found on its own to relieve sore throat and laryngitis and to even contain cancer-fighting chemicals. Cayenne, which we mentioned already, is an incredible vasodilator, which is why it's so good for peripheral neuropathies. And it can be used in combination with more specific immune support herbs. It tends to thin the phlegm and ease the passage of the phlegm from the lungs, improves circulation and blood pressure, and of course, improves digestion, it relieves gas, nausea, and indigestion. It's a good source of the immune herbs like vitamin A in the form of beta carotene, vitamin C, and vitamin D. Chamomile supports the immune system, in particular as an eye wash for conjunctivitis and as a vapor to alleviate symptoms of colds and asthma. It's been used as a mouthwash to help with the bacteria in the mouth and to keep gums healthy. As a helpful remedy for stress, anxiety, and tension, Chamomile can support the immune system by keeping good old cortisol in check. As a gentle sedative, it improves sleep, which is super important for immune function. 
It also soothes and calms the digestion, which improves nutrient absorption and elimination. That's important stuff for a good immune system. Cinnamon, it's antibacterial and antiviral. It strengthens digestion and, of course, is one of the most popular for lowering blood sugar. It can also lower blood pressure and mitigate the effects of stress. Clove is another one. It's usually used for gums that are painful. You rub clove oil on the gums, but it also helps lower blood sugar and improves the utilization of insulin and can speed the healing of cold sores. Cumin has been found to relieve colds, fevers, and sore throats and aids digestion and relieves constipation. It's even been shown that it might prevent cancer. It relieves insomnia and helps in supporting the immune system by helping you get a good night's sleep. Dill has been found to limit the growth of cancer cells. It improves gut health and it improves liver detoxification, in particular phase two liver detoxification, and can also help sleep. Plus, it's quite delicious. One of my favorite ways to eat dill is blended with cashews and other nuts and seeds, a little bit of lemon, and then dill and garlic. It's one of my favorite dips. Fenugreek can lower blood sugar and prevent constipation and is said to purify the blood by flushing out harmful toxins. And of course, our immune systems are impaired by excess toxicity and high blood sugar. So definitely a good one for immune system support. Garlic is generally considered the queen king of uh, immune support herbs. It's considered a natural antiseptic and a powerful cancer fighter. It's also good for heart health. It's an antiviral, antifungal, and overall antimicrobial. I have a friend who swallows six raw garlic cloves at the first sign of a cold to knock it out quickly. And guess what? It works. Ginger is a popular digestive aid, especially for nausea, and it's commonly used in motion sickness. How it affects the immune system is it's a potent anti-inflammatory. Let's talk lavender. Lavender is beautiful, and it also helps to relieve insomnia and other sleep disorders by calming the nervous system down. It also can help with circulatory disorders and relieve headaches. Headaches often accompany colds and flus as part of that infectious disease piece of the immune system, uh, or immune system assault, I should say. It relieves a lot of the symptoms of anxiety and can be super helpful for getting that good night's sleep, which is so critical for immune function. Let's talk nutmeg, another component of chai, chai tea. You can make chai that doesn't have caffeine because I know I don't personally do caffeine and a lot of folks don't, but nutmeg is an important piece of that. It is a stress reliever and it's helpful in improving sleep. It has antimicrobial properties in particular against bacteria and it helps to relieve inflammation and cold sores. It's even been found to fight against certain leukemia cells. And like many of the other herbs we've been looking at, it's a potent digestive aid and relieves gas and bloating and improves the digestion, absorption of nutrients, and detoxification. Oregano is super popular these days. It's popular as an immune support. It's commonly used for respiratory issues, such as stuffy noses and coughs. It's a good expectorant and potent antimicrobial, antiviral, and antifungal. It helps digestion and contains immune support nutrients like vitamins A, C, and flavonoids. It's also good not just for respiratory infections, but also has been shown to be helpful for GI tract infections. Parsley is a super potent diuretic and helps to eliminate toxins from the body by helping the kidneys to work better. And it helps with urinary tract infections and gastrointestinal effects. And parsley is a very common herb that most people use. Maybe upping the parsley when there's some immune assault can be super helpful. One of my favorites is peppermint. It opens the sinuses and soothes things like coughs, and calms the symptoms of colds. It can also be a good digestive soother, although I would stay away from peppermint if you suspect someone has low stomach acid because it can affect the lower esophageal sphincter. 
It helps headaches. Some people put a little dab of peppermint right under their nose and breathe that or put it on their temples for relieving headaches and some of the nerve pains and muscle aches that occur with colds and flus. Rosemary, it's antimicrobial, it's antioxidant. It's been shown to be antidepressant, especially in the case of a liver type depression where there's some liver stagnation and toxicity. It can relieve the itching in eczema, which is an autoimmune condition. It also dispels gas and increases stomach acid, which improves immune function by improving nutrient absorption. It can ease headaches, muscle aches, and mental fatigue that it can occur very frequently with colds and flus. Saffron helps clear airways in asthma and helps with sleepless nights. Good old sleep. A lot of these herbs help, help with sleep. So, and they're not the ones we usually think of. So if you're working with somebody who is troubled by not getting a good night's sleep, play with some of these herbs. Just send them to their kitchen and have them make some teas and tinctures and vinegars and all that sort of stuff. Sage has been shown to ease inflammation and as such can help with autoimmune conditions which are riddled with inflammation and also with infectious conditions. Tarragon improves digestion and is great for helping to get rid of intestinal parasites, which, of course, that's getting rid of those is part of the immune system's function, isn't it? Thyme can be a natural cough suppressant and has been reported to help with bronchitis and even whooping cough. It's also useful for chronic candidiasis and infections in general. It's antiviral and overall antimicrobial. And last but certainly not least, turmeric has been touted as a magical herb and can help with so many things because it's anti-inflammatory and antioxidant and supports liver detoxification. It's purported to have powerful anti-cancer properties and contains vitamins A, C, and E, which are important immune system nutrients. It's often used as a remedy for fever, colds, and flu, as well as in fighting yeast, and fungal infection. And because it can be helpful in lowering blood sugar, it helps to keep the immune system balanced and keeping those lymphocytes working well. So as you can see, there are so many great ways to support the immune system with common herbs and spices found in just about everybody's kitchen. Learn to use these powerful remedies and share them with your clients. It's so rewarding and empowering to feel confident in your ability to recommend remedies that cost next to nothing and are available 24-7. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of Reinvent Healthcare. I invite you to take action, to support your clients and explore the magical remedies in their kitchen that support immune function. Pick a few to start with, experiment on yourself, then introduce them to the appropriate clients. Create a few simple immune support recipes and share them with your clients. Create a simple handout you can give away to them and begin to establish yourself as an authority. The more you master the art of using food to balance hormones and body systems, the greater the success you'll have with empowering your clients to achieve their health and wellness goals. And that's what we're here for, right? to help people to get well, to help people to get to the root causes and correct them. When you can do this, you will have a thriving and fulfilling practice where you feel great at the end of the day because you're changing lives for the better. Remember to download our free immune modulation strategies guide to access charts and resources to support you in empowering your tribe to create a healthy and happy immune system. That's at www.reinventhealthcare.com forward slash immune. And check out the additional resources we've provided on the show notes page. And until next time, shine on. Thank you for listening to the Reinvent Healthcare podcast. Join the movement of practitioners that are guiding people to actually get well rather than covering up their symptoms. Connect with us at reinventhealthcare.com to access resources and tools that will empower you to create a thriving health practice.